Hello student to the course of physics of uh, linear and nonlinear optical web guides. Today we have lecture 7 and today we plan to cover uh, the concept of cutoff wavelength and then try to understand few very important characteristics of an optical fiber or some web guide. So, let me quickly start with whatever we have done in the last class. So, today we have lecture 7. So, in the last class we find that if we have a, a fiber structure like this, waveguide structure like this, in one refractive index here, in two here, in two here, we already find out for this kind of structure what is the critical angle and acceptance angle and acceptance angle for meridional ray is sin IC is equal to Na divided by Na, where Na is the refractive index, this is the axis, where Na was the refractive index outside of the waveguide. And this big Na which we call numerical aperture is n1 square minus n2 square whole to the power half that was the value. For skew ray the, there was another factor cos alpha here. Now this is my acceptance angle. I see this is my I see this is a range of my acceptance angle all the rays that should fall inside this cone should pass through in principle. But we can we, we find that okay if some ray is falling in which is falling like this can only propagate when some interference condition is there. So, that means this angle we calculated that this angle phi is a function of m where m is some integer value. So, that means it is not that all the rays will going to allow there are certain rays that can pass through in the fiber. So, that that is why it is a discrete we call it discrete ray. So, phi m that depends on some m value. So, m can be 0, 1, 2, 3 like this. So, we have the concept of discrete ray, not all the ray, but there will be some selective or some selective selective ray. So, few selective rays are allowed to pass not all the rays. Today we will going to also define another important concept another important term for waveguide uh, uh, for waveguide web system and that is called the cutoff wavelength. We already defined the V parameter. So, let me remind you V parameter was a parameter of a given waveguide which is defined like K0 A N A or 2 pi by lambda multiplied by a in 1 square minus in 2 square 
equal to the power half that is my cutoff wavelength that is my v parameter sorry so cutoff wavelength from this v parameter we can define something called cutoff wavelength so let me write it what is the meaning of cutoff wavelength in words then i am going to discuss this for single mode propagation we know for single mode propagation v is less than some value 2.405 this value is a value one can calculate that there is a method of calculation calculation of that so we need to understand what is mode and then we will going to discuss about this more this we know now if lambda decreases then v the v parameter increases that we also discuss that if lambda decreases because lambda is sitting here in denominator if this decreases then the value of the v will automatically increases if a and other parameter n1 and n2 are fixed so we should have a cutoff wavelength up to which the fiber or the waveguide supports single mode only one mode or single mode so naturally there is a restriction of lambda as well because if i put the expression vc which is the critical value of the v as 2.405 then this should be equal to the value of lambda c a and n1 square minus n2 square so this is the value of the lambda c for which i can have the single mode propagation if i now increase if I decrease the lambda c then what happen if lambda is less than lambda c then v will be greater than vc and there will be so the system will be no the system will be no longer a single mode system that means more than one mode can can propagate so with this restriction we can uh, clearly find out what is the value of lambda c so lambda c is simply 2 pi a in a divided by vc where vc equal to that critical value for which 
the system behave like a single mode fiber. So, once you know the value of Vc, once you know the value of N1, so Na again every time you need to remember whenever I write Na it is N1 square minus N2 square whole to the power half. So, whenever I write uh, these Na this is the value. So, lambda c one can calculate for a given waveguide. So, once the waveguide is given that means A is known, N A is known. So, readily I know what should be the value of lambda c. So, lambda c if I want to calculate is simply 2 pi A which will be given then N 1 square minus N 2 square this is the this is the geometrical parameter of the waveguide divided by V c and in place of V c I can write simply 2.405. So, all the values are known for a given waveguide and if these values are known we can calculate for the given waveguide what is lambda c. And lambda c we call is at cutoff wavelength. So, I can calculate the cutoff wavelength if the condition, if the geometrical parameter of the waveguide is given and also V c is supplied. Okay, now, uh, the next uh, thing we like to discuss few things about the fiber characteristics. So, basic few basic characteristics of the fiber. So, fiber So, few basic fiber characteristics. So, the first thing we are going to learn about the loss. There is a very, very important parameter, important property or important phenomena that happens in the fiber. So, definitely when some web in the waveguide when the light is propagating, it will not going to propagate to a very, very long distance due to some losses and which is quite natural in the nature. In fiber also we have certain losses and I can list out few of them. One is presence of impurity. because of the presence of impurity what happened did the, that may absorb that may absorb light and it goes to uh, so, there are certain impurities that may present in the material of the waveguide and due to the presence of this impurity what happened they will going to absorb certain amount of light and because of because the fact they are absorbing the light we will going to have a certain amount of loss. So, which kind of material are normally present as a impurity these are like iron nickel etc so they so when they absorb so what happened so i also note that so there there, sh there should be some kind of electronic
transition due to the absorption of of the photon. So, what happened? So, this material going to absorb the photon and there will be electronic transition and eventually we will going to have a loss in this, uh, this system which is uh, in, uh, where the uh, light is propagating. Next thing specially for fiber, specially for fiber which is made of uh, silica, the presence of the presence of OH molecules moisture so si oh band what happened due to the presence of oh molecules as impute as an impurity so si oh band absorbs at absorbs light actually at lambda equal to nearly equal to 1.4 micrometer. So, if I have a wedge band then this wedge band will going to absorb. So, there is some vibrational energy associated with this uh, SI and OH, uh, OH uh, uh, OH bond. So, th there is a few frequencies are there and these frequencies are uh, are matching with this resonance frequency and that is why it should have some vibrational band. So, lambda around lambda equal to 1.4 at that uh, wavelength uh, range it will going to absorb the light and we will going to have a peak the absorption peak there especially this is uh, this is uh, specially for the optical fiber. So, we have to be very careful in making the core of the optical fiber and lot of efforts are there to make this uh, to remove this OH molecules so that we, sh we should not have the absorption uh, the OH molecules absorption loss. Another uh, example of the loss is say the Rayleigh scattering. And we know that in Lallis scattering we have uh, the absorption scattering loss of the order of 1 by lambda to the power 4. If lambda is very very small then we have large amount of scattering. So, when electromagnetic wave is propagating for, for small wavelengths it can experience the Rayleigh scattering inside the medium. So, there are few very very uh, very very well known examples apart from that there are other issues also through which one can expect losses. So, uh, for example, bending loss. So, I will come this. So, so before that I will like to show very a very hand drawn picture of the loss curve that one can have for fiber. So, in y axis if I plot loss which has a unit dB per kilometer. This is a very, very special unit normally used in all fiber optics communication uh, systems. And if I plot lambda in this direction, say in micrometer unit, Then the loss curve or attenuation curve is typically like this, a very rough drawing. For better drawing you can search internet or in, you can find in the book as well. 
So, we have as I mentioned we have a peak here and this peak is around lambda equal to 1.4 where this is due to the loss of this OH molecule. So, which basically have a vibrational energy, a vibrational transition here I absorb the light here and we have a peak. This portion this lower lambda portion is for Rayleigh scattering. And this higher part higher also you can see the the loss is increasing here and at some point here there is a minimum loss. In this side also if I go to the lower wavelength we have a higher loss. If I go to the higher wavelength also it seems that losses are increases and this loss is due to the IR absorption. is due to the IR absorption. So, we have a very very narrow window here in this region near very close to 1.4 where we have the minimum loss and obviously for a transmission system we required a region where the characteristics loss should be very very small. And this these are the few losses which uh, always be there it will be very difficult to remove. Apart from that another kind of loss one can expect. So, this is a loss spectra what I draw here is loss, spe loss spectra. For fiber loss as a function of wavelength. Now, I can have another kind of loss which is uh, which is uh, important in, in fiber optics communication and which is called bending loss. If I bend the optical fiber, so th this is the fiber for state fiber and we know for state fiber already in the ray picture we find that if this is my critical angle if I launch something greater than the critical angle then it will be reflected back like this. So, this is the structure for for straight fiber and this angle is theta c is a critical angle and I launch something. So, total internal reflection will take place here. Now, if I bend the fiber, so there is a possibility. So, if I bend the fiber like this, so there is a possibility that whatever the critical angle I have, so the ray now will not going to follow this condition. So, here if this angle is theta this big angle is theta which is greater than theta c. Now, the same theta can be the same theta I launch in a similar way, but here this theta can be less than theta c and light can leak through due to the bending. This is ray picture.
in the ray picture I can understand qualitatively how one can have the bending loss. However, also the mode picture is is there, so we will going to learn that. So, when the light is propagating, it is associated with something called mode, the distribution. So, this distribution, if I draw, it should be like this so very much confined the mode is very much confined so so I, we can see the mode if i set this region so the mode is very much confined inside the system and it is propagating through it is propagating through like this I can have another so the mode is propagating without any problem so everything is inside the system now if I bend this if I bend this like the previous case, if I bend this, so the distribution of the mode will be affected by this bend radius and now instead of having this we can have a mode distribution like this and if I said this it should be like this. In this straight region by the way I can have less leaky part. So, this is the part which is leaking. So, here we, we, we can see a region this is loss due to the bend what happened some portion of the energy is leaking through the fiber and due to that one can expect some kind of loss and this is due to the, the this is the consequence if I if I bend a fiber well uh, with this note I like to conclude today's class so, today we learn qualitatively uh, the concept of losses, before that also uh, we learn something called the cutoff wavelength, how to calculate the cutoff wavelength etcetera. In the next class we will uh, continue with the loss uh, and try to find out uh, the units that is being used to calculate the loss. So, thank you for your attention, so see you in the next class.